have with, with me today Dr. Gary North, and uh, Dr. North is the, the author and also the presenter of a series that American Vision has produced. There's 15 uh, 30-minute talks dealing with the history of the conservative movement. In this uh, first segment, there are uh, eight 30-minute uh, talks, and then the second volume will, of course, include uh, seven. And in addition to what you find on here in terms of the lecture series, we have included a number of uh, really important and hard to find uh, conservative books that have been instrumental in the conservative movement. Uh, Gary, if, to, to give a definition of, of, the, of what is a conservative today, and we talked a little bit about that in the previous uh, section, um, give us some idea, kind of a, a classical definition of, of a conservative and uh, kind of how has that definition changed in, in, in the modern understanding of it from, from both the left and, and, and the right? If you take this back to where I would take it, would, which would be in the, uh, the mid to late 18th century, the two figures that were most important were Adam Smith, a Scottish rationalist philosopher and economist, and Edmund Burke, who was the British Member of Parliament, they were agreed on almost all issues. They were correspondents together. They were really part of a mutual admiration society. Burke was suspicious of grand theories of anything. He believed that you tied liberty to the rights of Englishmen, which were historical rights. And in the case of England, there was no written constitution. So he was very much in favor of the courts, the limitations on government power that common law provided. And generally, he wanted property in the hands of a broad base of individuals. He did not trust the state. He did not trust the expansion of government power because he believed that individual liberty is tied to property. And you would say, well, that sounds like Smith, and it was like Smith. The difference, however, is that Smith's Wealth of Nations provided a grand theory of cause and effect in society, of how markets work, of how markets clear, of how increased productivity of an individual leads to the increased wealth of a society. Burke would not have opposed that, but he was not going to tie his career or his thinking to any grand theory or any systematic logic. He was suspicious of all grand theories. And you have the same kind of division prevailing today. The moral value people tend to be suspicious of economic theories which lead people to conclude that virtually everything should be legalized and that it's just a market phenomena. They say, no, no, there, there are ethical issues here, and if you lose your ethics, you may have great efficiency, but if it's too great efficiency, you'll see the destruction of society cheaper than would have been otherwise possible. Whereas the people who tend to think of themselves as the heirs of Adam Smith say, what right does the state have to intervene to control the flow of money or power or anything else? we've got to have hands off almost completely within society. So this division has grown up since certainly the early 19th century and has split the conservative movement in the time that I would say is the real backbone of the movement, the post-World War II period. Now, who do you, who do you think is winning this battle today? I mean, you've, you've got various groups out there. Uh, you know, that are p p pushing agenda. I mean, you find a number of conservative groups uh, who have adopted kind of a, a Darwinian view. On, they're on the right, and the, the, the morality aspect of things is very pragmatic. So uh, who's, who's winning the war of words? We you know what's going on in, in, in the courts. Uh, but on, on the ideological front, who really is winning this battle? Well, if you're talking about who has the largest audience, and who's selling the most books, these days probably your most vocal individual is Glenn Beck because he's very good with media and he has a lot of viewers. He's really gifted in getting simple ideas across. He's a Mormon. He is a, he would not say reformed drunk. AA members don't use that kind of language. He is a recovering alcoholic. 
and he had some kind of crisis in his life at some point getting to the edge and pulling back and he regards that crisis as having shaped the way he thinks so in that respect I see him more as a traditional values person I would say in contrast Rush Limbaugh is more focused on what has the government done to us lately what is it going to do if it continues he's not as hardcore on the what I would call the moral issues yet both of them are highly critical of virtually everything that the government is doing if you look at the Tea Party movement the motivating issue there seems to be government spending out of control spending and the high level of taxation that that spending is eventually going to require in order to keep the government from going bankrupt so for that side of the movement which is very recent it only really has appeared since the early part of 2009 for that part of the movement the economic issues seem more dominant than the social or ethical issues another figure who is in the middle representing both would be Ron Paul who is an anti-abortionist who is a gynecologist who is in favor of what he calls constitutional limits on power and yet certainly in his economic projections uh, public projections of his ideology he is in favor of cutting back virtually all regulation including regulation over drugs because he thinks that the grant of power that is it required to police all of the drug laws will lose you more freedom than any benefits that you might gain through the enforcement of the laws okay when we come back uh, I want a, a little bit of your background because you've been involved in the conservative movement for a very long time and you've 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 seen this development take place and I'd like you to kind of take us back a little bit to give us a, some history of, of what you've seen uh, and some of the some of the new trends and talk a little bit about technology and how it, it has it is changing the ideolo ideological war that's out there we'll be back in the next segment <laughs>